Хочу поприветствовать. I'd like to welcome the participants of uh, our expert discussion, gas motor fuel, uh, auto gas fuel, uh, future of Russia. And our topic is being uh, discussed for the first time at the, one of the leading uh, platforms of uh, discussions in Russia. And we have uh, now the good opportunity to open the 10th Jubilee Kaidar Forum. The goal of our discussion today is to discuss solutions for the speed-up development of uh, gas motor fuel market in Russia. And we plan to discuss press uh, topics which are indicated on the screen and in your materials. The timing is quite tight today, dear colleagues, so we are going to work very dynamically and concise. We discussed with speakers, with experts, our agenda, and we are going to stick to this timeline. Let me uh, introduce to you our distinguished speakers today, um, the uh, v Viktor Zubkov, uh, Chairman of uh, the Board of Directors of Gazprom, Minister of Energy of Russian Federation Alexander Novak, Deputy Minister of uh, Industry and Trade of Russian Federation Alexander Morozov, Director General of uh, Power Softcom Flot uh, Sergei Frank, Director of, Ran of RANEPA, Director of Institute of George Idrisov. Also, we have uh, the participants uh, and leading experts of uh, the industry. We are going to meet them in uh, detail during discussions of our issues. Uh, we have here representatives of companies, regions, and uh, mass media. The uh, experts and specialists who are interested in um, finding solutions and uh, who are eager to see the results of the development of the industry. First, I'd like to propose to you a very short uh, graphic material on the screen, please, your attention. On the forecast, in the nearest decades, the consumption of natural gas in uh, the world will grow much faster than other um, sources, uh, oil and gas. And one of the driver is the market of gas motor fuel. The most uh, fast growing uh, uh, pace is forecasted in the transport segment. This is one of uh, good opportunities for Russia to implement uh, their benefits and uh, advantages. And we all leaders in our Asian countries and countries of Southern America, where the fuel conversion uh, 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 factor is the low price for fuel. Russia uh, on, is lagging behind from world leaders in uh, retrofitting by more than dozens of uh, times. On the brim of the decades, a new start for the gas fuel motor. What infrastructure does exist in Russia? In Russia, we have more than 150 uh, cars working on natural gas. One third of them uh, are uh, uh, trucks and uh, one tenth are buses. Uh, more than 200 models is produced for gas motor fuel, and we have a chain uh, n numbering 387 gas filling stations. 300 of them belong to Power Gazprom. Benefit for price, uh, environment, and safety. Guarantee of quality, very well known to all participants of the market. But we have barriers on uh, the way of uh, speed up development. We need a new systemic step. Active participation in fuel conversion will benefit for the development of social and economics of uh, Russia, improvement of life standards, and creating comfortable uh, standards for their living. Uh, summing up the information uh, which you've seen, I'd like to draw a few conclusions. First, uh, the global economy is going to the era of gas, and uh, all the statistics confirm this. In Russia, we already have uh, the basic uh, gas filling infrastructure and a number of vehicles, fleets. And uh, third, the topic of gas, uh, auto gas fuel is uh, part of the global and the national agenda. And Gazprom is one of the global leaders and Gazprom Auto Gas Fuel Department. I think this is an axiom, this is uh, a fact which we see today and can feel today. 
also the contribution to the market by the mm, uh, chairman of Power Gazprom, of Mr. Zubkov, is evident. And please, Viktor Alexeyevich, Ms. Mr. Zubkov, would you please uh, say a few welcoming words? And uh, I'd like to pass the floor to you, please. Good morning, dear ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, dear participants and uh, guests here in the podium. I'm really glad to welcome all the participants of our discussion today. Today we are going to discuss uh, perspectives and uh, opportunities for the development of uh, auto gas uh, fuel market. A few words about the natural gas. Natural gas uh, is uh, developing dynamically. It is becoming more and more popular all over the world. And for the last decade, the consumption of uh, the natural gas grew by 20%. The consumption is growing globally very significantly. Only last year we had the growth of 4%. By the results of the previous year, the global consumption of the natural gas will be higher than 3.8 trillions of cubic meters. By 2040, experts forecast that gas will be the only fossil fuel which share among fossil fuels uh, would grow and in absolute figures would reach 5.4 trillion cubic meters. The main increment of consumption is expected in Asia and Pacific region, Northern uh, America, uh, Middle East. Um, energy sector will uh, play the main major role here and also transport industry the annual growth expected 2.2 percent and 4.2 percent respectively uh, the consumption of the natural gas in transport by 2040 may grow by 160 percent and can reach the value of 360 billion cubic meters you know that's a lot and uh, we're now exporting to europe around uh, 220 billion cubic meters and you can just imagine 360 billion cubic meter what will be the figure it's not a secret that uh, the resources of light oil are shrinking and uh, the majority of countries will have to go offshore uh, seek for alternative uh, means of production and the costs of uh, production would grow as for gas, uh, the trend is reverse. The uh, resources are only growing, and the relative uh, low price of gas uh, uh, fuel can be guaranteed for many decades uh, 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 ahead. I now looked at uh, uh, gas stations. Diesel costs 47 rubles. Uh, it's coming closer and closer to 50 rubles uh, threshold. If I would look at these figures 10 years ago, in 2008, diesel uh, price was 21 ruble. The main um, advantage of gas uh, is its uh, ecological friendliness. Pollutions from gas motor fuel, which is very important for big cities, is minimum. And I'd like to cite a small example from our company, Gazprom. We have uh, a lot of uh, transport, different transport, different vehicles. We uh, have passenger transport, technological vehicles, uh, passenger cars, uh, more than uh, 30,000 uh, vehicles in our fleet. And five years ago, we started actively retrofit our transport and convert it to the natural gas. We uh, covered 1.5 thousand uh, vehicles a year. And uh, today, 40% of the transport fleet of Gazprom is already migrated to natural gas fuel. The total economic effect from uh, this uh, activity reached 3.7 billion rubles. We s saved almost 4 billion rubles. And uh, the reduction of pollution due to the retrofitting of our equipment to gas uh, made more than 100,000 tons for five years. And uh, so uh, I think if uh, 
one region, if we take one region and uh, would uh, have implemented such program for five years, it could have saved the same amount of uh, money and even maybe even more, uh, would uh, have lower pollution. And uh, for this savings, it was it would be possible to buy around 300 school buses, which is uh, a big deficit now in regions. Uh, kids are transported uh, on bed uh, buses, which are not suitable for this trust. But I know the situation because we are helping a lot uh, regions to buy these school buses, and 300 school buses is it means uh, that it would be they could cover more than 300. Uh, small villages only due to the savings owing to the implementation of the uh, NGV fuel. Of course, we need to explain more to people the uh, advantages of NGV on all levels uh, in the international organizations, uh, government structures, and uh, down to end users. The global fleet working on the uh, uh, compressed natural gas and liquefied natural gas is growing constantly. Today, uh, motor fuel is used in by 80 countries. And uh, this fuel is uh, filled to more than 226 million uh, vehicles. Uh, more than 30,000 gas filling stations are uh, uh, existing all over the world. In Gazprom, we have 300 stations, and uh, we're practically only company who is uh, uh, trying to develop these uh, these stations and build them, but we think it's very few. We we should reach the level of 500 stations in uh, the nearest years. And uh, but in in our country, we need uh, a network of at least 1.5 thousand stations, good stations, to very well equipped to be able to fill uh, vehicles moving along the roads of our country. Who are the leaders here? China, India, Pakistan, Iran, and uh, also many European countries. I uh, often visit China because I'm the member of the board of uh, the Economic Forum. And I can see that in China, in particular in Peking, in Beijing, uh, they paid a lot of attention uh, to uh, the environment. Uh, an official going out uh, to the street uh, in the morning checks the uh, status of the atmosphere and then. Uh, uh, because the, they have huge uh, pollutions in cities. And the, the only factor which could help them is to retrofit in massive uh, matter their uh, vehicles to NGV. Or let's take Japan, t Tokyo. A few years ago, it was absolutely impossible to breathe in this city. Now the city is much uh, cleaner because they converted a lot of vehicles to NGV. In China, six million six million vehicles are moving along the road. We have 150,000. And uh, where is China? Where is Russia? We have 40% uh, of uh, global reserves of uh, gas. China doesn't have any reserves. They buy it from all over the world, from Australia, from New Zealand, from Qatar, and also from the US and from whatever uh, other countries. Uh, the uh, and the Russia should uh, play the leading role in the global gas market, both in terms of uh, the gas reserves and gas export volumes, and also in terms of uh, gas uh, fuel implementation on transport. And uh, by the way, all these endeavors are uh, supported by our president, President Putin, because he understands very well that our huge country with uh, our developed gas pipelines have gas routes. We have 172 kilometers of gas pipelines. We can provide uh, gas to any to every country to to to, to every uh, town to every city and we can install gas stations everywhere. Uh, I uh, mentioned Europe. Uh, they uh, start doing this job in this area. Let's take Italy. Maybe uh, the example of India and Pakistan is not so evident, but let's take Italy in Europe. It's not a uh, pure country, uh, but uh, Lombardia uh, province, the amount of cars uh, is higher than the uh, number of 
people, and it has become not possible to live there. People go to went to the uh, governance, to the management, and uh, they told them, let's do something, and they uh, retrofitted whole transport to gas. One. 1 million, 1.2 million cars in Italy, they buy our gas and they don't have their gas, but they convert it there to NGV. People are working, people are creating new cars, new vehicles, and by the way, working on NLG, LNGs, uh, all uh, heavy trucks uh, work on LNG, 40 tons uh, of uh, of uh, loads with a range of 500 kilometers. Some of our companies start to buy such trucks and uh, uh, they are very content, very happy with this, uh, because uh, from Bransk or Smolensk, they can reach Moscow or St. Petersburg on only one gas filling with load. We are building gas filling stations, albeit not as fast as uh, we should, but about 40 to 35 gas filling stations a year. But the reason we're not building them as many as we could, because the capacity is 27%. We're working at loss. Now we have invested 18 billion Russian rubles into constructions. But we are continue building. Our stations are not used to capacity. And the question is, why? Because not so much equipment is being produced by the manufacturing plants. There is not enough equipment which is being uh, converted. There is no enough capacity to convert existing uh, cars and vehicles for uh, natural gas. Although we do have uh, companies and individuals who would like to uh, convert, let's say, their truck or their passenger car, or be it a bus, to convert it to the NGV fuel. And they do it. I've met some people like that at different gas filling stations. I was speaking to these people and, and they said, never ever I will be using um, uh, gasoline or a diesel fuel because I'm filling up my car, let's say 14, 15 to 16 rubles a liter. And my, my truck functions just as well. And uh, uh, technically speaking, the, the same uh, capabilities are as the, the car just drives as good as if it would be a diesel car or anything else. So we are intending to keep building gas filling stations. We have to work with the Russian regions as to make them more involved into this endeavor so that we allocate more lands to building gas stations and uh, so we see uh, more uh, companies and uh, more individuals who would like uh, to retrofit their vehicles uh, uh, for NGV or to buy the new ones uh, with the NGV installed. And again, quite big prospects are seen in uh, converting not only transportation and vehicles, I mean the, the ground transportations uh, for NGV, but also speaking about agricultural equipment. Uh, for many years I have been involved in agriculture. For five years I have been working in the Russian government. And every year we have been uh, subsidizing as much as 30% uh, the cost of the diesel fuel and gasoline fuel for agricultural companies. If you've ever been involved into this industry, you may remember it was 2007, 2008, 2009, and 10. And back then, people would pay 20 Russian rubles for one liter of diesel fuel, 20 rubles. And now they're paying the wholesale prices for the winter diesel fuel as much as 50 rubles. I do not know how can they afford amid this uh, economical situation to uh, to even uh, output this agricultural produce and to sell it at reasonable prices that beyond beyond uh, any comprehension. And I believe that we have to accelerate this effort of uh, converting to the NGV fuel. And we do have these kind of capabilities. Mr. Batirshin, one of these days has shown us in the Republic of Tatarstan how they've made a local conversion, uh, made the uh, um, feasibility and technical um, substantiation. So we, we have to help this kind of pioneers. We don't have many of them in our country, unfortunately. 
uh, but the sooner we will start doing it, the sooner our economy receive uh, real support. And cutting costs at the transportation sector is the solid way to cut uh, costs of uh, different products which are being shipped uh, to the buyers. And this is what we have to uh, talk about, presumably, today. Thank you very much. Thank you for very informative um, introductory words. And I would like to say that much of what we are going to speak about today and this uh, kind of market analysis is laying the groundwork uh, for our subsequent discussion. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, to be able to make uh, our conversation more effective, uh, just before this session, we've had a expert poll of the market participants, and many of you have been part of it. And I'm uh, kindly asking you to show the first slot. It's about the, it's about the state regulation of the industry. You can see this on screen now, and I would like uh, to note that, as we can see, according to our experts, it is very important to the market to see that the government is uh, is stimulating the market. And I would like to address the Minister of Energy of Russia, Alexander Novik, and asking him to share about the plans of the Russian Minister of Energy about developing um, natural gas vehicle fuel, what kind of programs are being or will be adopted. We've been speaking a lot about these programs, and the market is awaiting these programs. And I would like to hear the first hand uh, this type of information. Alexander, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, dear colleagues. Uh, good morning, and thank you for the invitation to be a part of the GUIDAR forum this year and to be able to discuss um, very hot topics such as using the NGV fuel in our economy, in, in public consumption in Russia. Uh, Viktor uh, Zubkov um, has given us very validated um, talk and he gave us the overview of what is going on in the world today and what are the Russian challenges in cutting costs in transportation. And frankly, I'm feeling a little bit ambiguous because I am not in a position to criticize, let's say, diesel fuel because I'm, among other things, am responsible for, um, for the oil refineries development, for increasing the ecological factor of the new types of fuel speaking of diesel fuel and gasoline fuels. And uh, we launch this program. We are upgrading uh, Russian refineries. Uh, back in 2016, we switched to the class five uh, of the fuel. And then the next will be class six. And now the elsewhere in, in the world, uh, we can see the class eight. And as for the um, natural gas vehicle fuel, I am proponent of this topic and uh, Ministry of Energy is very supportive of this program. We do believe that the gas is the most environmental fuel of all the fuels or fossil fuels available to us today. Its consumption in the world will be growing, and Russia is the global leader in this regard. And not only we can use gas as a fuel to produce heat and, uh, and energy, but also we can use uh, gas more proactively in uh, transportation. Many countries of the world are doing this. Uh, Viktor Alexeyevich has been citing Iran, Pakistan, uh, People's Republic of China, USA, which are developing their own infrastructure, Argentina, Colombia. Uh, many countries are pursuing this uh, opportunity. And I would like to point out that this is not a new topic to us. Mm, not. We haven't began discussion today. Back in 2013, the Russian president at the has given decrees about the development of uh, implementing NGV fuel, speaking about the CNG, compressed natural gas, and liquefied natural gas, because as you may know, uh, it has been used very widely, but it's not as uh, environmentally friendly and quite more expensive. So now the world is moving towards uh, CNG and LNG. And since 2013, 
until today. I believe we've done quite extensive work because the Russian government back in 2013 approved an integrated plan and a roadmap to um, stimulate the development uh, of the NGV fuel when we first began this work from scratch because there was no legislative base, there was no standards, there was no uh, statistics for this field. Um, we could see some very uh, tough rules in terms of fire safety, but since then there were some amendments introduced into our legislative base and in terms of the hazard class, the gas stations have been attributed to class 4, the new ghost standard has been uh, introduced and 56 uh, regions of Russia have signed the programs of developing uh, of the NGV fuel, the Gazprom company is now very proactive in this field and thanks to Viktor Alexeyevich Zubkov, he's also uh, the driver of this process and uh, speaking about the Russian Ministry of Energy. We, he's keeping up, uh, keeping us in good shape and I'm as a member of the board of the Gazprom company with the chairman of the board is Viktor Alexeyevich. He can assure that uh, every session we begin with a discussion of this topic after the Zenit Soccer Club. And this is how we started today's session. And uh, so what we would like to point out that um, in this period we've had some positive and quality changes, not only related to legislation. Back in 2013 we had 400 million uh, cubic meters of gas as consumption volume. After 2016 it was 624 million cubic meters, so 1.5 time increase. Of course, it's not a big number against the uh, production. We are um, consuming 450 million cubic meters in Russia alone, mostly for the heat production and energy production and very small uh, share um, in terms of using gas as the motor fuel. But the potential is huge. We've had increased as 1.5 times and we have more ambitious tasks. We've built 155 uh, gas stations. Uh, Gazprom built 110 and the rest was due to private investments. The Rosneft company has built several stations and some private investments have been also involved. But still, I believe it's a very slow pace because now we can see a new stage when we have to make another step in incentivizing the industry for more um, for more accelerated development in introducing the NGV fuel, we do have challenges, and some of the challenges which I'm seeing today, in this year alone, the Ministry of Energy was identified as the key ministry responsible for this issue because we know that it's an uh, it's a multifaceted integrated program and. Uh, uh, it could be the responsibility of different uh, federal um, uh, agencies, Ministry of Transportation, Ministry of Trade, Ministry of Energy, among other things, and the constituent territories of Russia, Russian regions, because we're speaking about uh, allocating lands and, and building the infrastructure. It all should be done by the Russian regions. And, and of course, the equipment manufacturers and the and the fleet manufacturers and developing uh, services and uh, auto transportation companies. There is a lot of uh, counterparties which are involved and they should develop their business and their uh, economies to move forward, which is not an easy process. So the government should not only develop legislation, but in like many other countries, it should incentivize the gas filling infrastructure and the um, consumption of this kind of equipment. We've also, back in April of 2018, we had a very important session with the President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, who also has been looking into this question, and he gave instruction to, um, to build a program for development of NGV uh, fuel, make it a part of the state um, program and identify the responsible agency uh, to increase the liability for um, Russian regions um, um, using these programs. We have um, prepared the concept of de developing NGV fuel uh, back in the summer of the last year. And on October 15, such a draft program had been introduced in for the Russian government. I'm sorry, not a program, but a concept. And this concept um, identifies the main lines of development of the 
uh, um, natural gas vehicle fuel, the, the Russian region's involvement, the federal executive body's involvement, developing the gas filling infrastructure, uh, building the different equipment and consumption of this equipment. We have some very ambitious plans which are part of this concept. Until 2030, from today's 600 million cubic meters of the gas consumptions, we would like to boost it to 11 billion cubic meters of gas, which is uh, quite a big leap forward. And from today's 100 to 150,000 cars which are running uh, on NGV fuel, we would like to increase this number to 700 vehicles, 700,000 vehicles. And we uh, have the legal support, we have the incentives uh, provided. Of course, all of this will require some investments and incentives for buying these vehicles and equipment, for building this infrastructure. And this uh, program is calling for for it. We would like to increase the number of gas filling stations from today's 300 uh, stations and 380 stations, as it has been mentioned by Victor, to uh, 2030 by 2024. And uh, we are looking at about um, 13, 1400 such stations in the future. When today we uh, do not have any gas filling stations which would be using CNG, and by 2030 we would like to build them 200 and and even more. So, what are the main lines of development? And speaking about the LNG, LNG is about using the special gas motor fuel uh, at the federal highways, at the main uh, motor ways where we have the heavy trucks running with building the gas stations within the range 400 kilometers, which would be the minimal, or I'm sorry, the maximum distance between the stations. In Europe, now from 400 kilometers, they're moving down to 100 and 150 uh, kilometers. And we're speaking about the routes Moscow to St. Petersburg, Moscow to Rostov and Don. We're speaking about the main highways. And we are going to subsidize this kind of the uh, gas stations, six, 60 million rubles per one station. As for the NGV fuel, we are also assuming to um, issue incentives for building the gas stations to attract private investments with involvement of the Russian regions and each regions will have to update uh, their programs or, or to build their programs of the deploying the gas uh, filling infrastructures. I'm mostly speaking about the cities with a population 100,000 plus people. At the first stage, we have to convert uh, vehicles, those vehicles which are polluting our cities today. Speaking about the cargo, uh, trucks, uh, the the fleet which has been used in the utilities sector, uh, public buses and taxis. And we have to locate those gas filling stations in accordance with the territorial planning schemes where they could be more efficient and more convenient for people to use, um, to use uh, the CNG in the cities. And now very briefly, I would like to touch upon the other issues. We can see the big potentials in using the the CNG as the bunkering fuel. And uh, we've had the guests from our board of directors recently. We've been speaking among other issues. Um, and the Victor Alexeyevich issued uh, and instructions to work on that. And uh, we have a department in charge of this issue. And we are seeing that the world is moving in this direction. And Russia could be a little bit more uh, more active in this field because it's a business of the future. And I guess we will have very detailed discussion about that. And the next um, area would be the railway transportation when we do not have the railways electrified. The potential is big. But um, presently, only uh, three locomotives are running on the CNG, and potential is simply huge. It's an agricultural equipment, uh, which has been mentioned today. It's uh, open pit uh, equipment, career equipment, um, where we have the large capacity trucks. And there is no single big uh, vehicle which would be running on the CNG. Like I've mentioned, the utility sector. And now, what are the uh, challenges we're facing? As I'm wrapping up my um, short speech, the the goals are that by the first end of first quarter, by the March, we have to adopt the public program, 
as the subdivision of our uh, of our own program developed in the Ministry of Energy. You're speaking about the March of 2018, 19 exactly. When we build the budget for the next three years, we are going to consider the issues of the allocating these funds, and the government is uh, supportive. And Dmitry Kozak has held a meeting uh, in December of 2018. He's also supported us that we need uh, to identify these funds for the national projects, and a special project should be a um, uh, project for um, developing NGV fuel. Now they are in the stage of elaboration. As the, for financing, we can speak later about it. And for 2019, we've been instructed with the Ministry of Finance uh, to uh, to allocate about four billion rubles uh, for subsidizing the constructions of the uh, NGV gas stations and retrofitting um, vehicles for the gas motor fuel. Thank you very much. I believe uh, it was very extensive answer and uh, a story about the understanding of uh, this government strategy in this area. We understand and we know how can we plan our future activities proceeding from the opportunities provided by our state. Dear colleagues, uh, I'd like to tell you that uh, we uh, uh, would like to make our discussion as interactive as possible. You have in your hands special uh, flyers with barcodes and uh, with uh, the uh, uh, websites GMT-RF. Uh, if you go to this website, you can ask questions to speakers, and we will do our best uh, somehow to, to make the question-answer session of to, uh, our main part. And um, if you will also be able to uh, uh, handle two questions for the voting exercise, uh, which will be then uh, happen in the end of our session. It's very interesting exercise. It would be interesting to ask uh, each other about the limitations and constraints we have in the market and what are uh, the uh, risks and opportunities in the, the market of the NGV fuel we can see. Dear colleagues, we continue and we move to a very important point of um, market creation, uh, in particular development of infrastructure of uh, NGV fuel market. Um, of, uh, Gazprom has been uh, acting as a single operator for more than five years uh, in this area, and I'd like to ask um, the general director of Gazprom Gas Motor Fuel, uh, um, Mr. Um, Mikhailenkov Vladimirovich, M Mr. Mikhailenko, to uh, speak about this a little bit to tell us what are the barriers and what are the opportunities to efficiently develop the infrastructure in our market. Thank you very much, Mr. Lashevsky. Good morning, dear participants of this discussion, uh, Mr. Uh, Zubkov and uh, all uh, other guests and participants. I'd like to say that uh, in the welcoming words of Mr. Zubkov and Mr. Novak, uh, the topic of uh, the NGV fuel and its perspective were covered very extensively. So I'm going to go into detail about the activities of our company, and I try to fit into the uh, um, timeline. Um, we have 387 uh, filling stations. Uh, 299 of them belong to Gazprom Group production facilities of our filling stations, I mean new filling stations, uh, full-fledged, full-cycle filling stations, uh, amounts to about 2 billion cubic meters a year. We are able to sell in the market about 2 billion cubic meters a year. As for the barriers and constraints for the massive retrofitting of uh, vehicles, of course, we uh, do not have enough infrastructure for that. And uh, our minimum target is around 500 uh, facilities, 500 filling stations, and uh, in the long run, uh, around 2.3 thousand uh, points or uh, facilities of our infrastructure. And uh, we should have uh, these stations every 200 uh, uh, kilometers. No, 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 no. 
uh, for the last uh, four years, our investments amounted to uh, about 17 million rubles. We built uh, 85 new filling stations uh, without speaking about retrofitting. We retrofitted some, of, we upgraded some of uh, stations which are key stations in key places. Um, these are uh, CPG modules uh, and uh, filling modules and different pieces of equipment. We built 27 new locations and commissioned uh, 27 in the last year. What are our barriers? Uh, it's a high cost of equipment, of course, and uh, a significant cost of technological tappings and connections in terms of uh, energy, water, sometimes uh, in some places with gas. With gas, of course, it's easier to solve these issues, but nevertheless, and uh, very often, it's a very significant amount of money which needs to be spent during construction of our filling station. And of course, land, land uh, with some regions, we have agreements uh, where state and municipal plots are uh, provided. In some places, in some regions, we have to buy private plots uh, where we can uh, have uh, convenient tappings to um, bus lines. If uh, in the vicinity there's no gas, of course, it's quite uh, complicated to build the station and what should um, be the right of ways for um, providing necessary pipelines. To reduce these risks, along with Russian producers in Russia, we uh, designed own compressor equipment. We designed the, the uh, LNG production block, production unit, and uh, we also designed model, modular filling stations. And today we use typical technological solutions. Today, the Russian gas uh, fuel market is the most fast-growing. The uh, uh, volume of sales of TNG is growing by 8 to 11 percent annually. In 2018, the total uh, amount of sold gas as fuel amount to 676 million cubic meter, which uh, uh, and the Gazprom sold more than 500 um, of them. The uh, utilization grew by 4% in the recent uh, years, but it's quite low. And uh, uh, across the Ru Russia, as of end of 2018, it amounts to 28% only. What are the constraints? Lack of the equipment working and vehicles working on uh, the natural gas for the uh, growth of this process at the initial stage in the nearest five years, we need to have 35, uh, 30 to 35,000 units of gas using equipment uh, emerge uh, in uh, the market. Today, we have around seven to eight uh, thousands a year. Very important condition is uh, the availability of uh, the regulatory base. And Mr. Novak spoke a lot about it. Together with the federal bodies, we uh, cr tried to create uh, good conditions for market development. We updated sanitary norms, uh, fire norms, and fire safety requirements uh, for gas filling stations and gas facilities. So we designed the rules of subsidizing the market players, and we designed necessary uh, state programs of energy efficiency and energy sector development, along with the roadmap. The barriers uh, are is first the uh, lack of support on the regional level, uh, although other speakers will tell us uh, about the pilot projects in Rostov in Belgorod. Uh, and uh, we have a very significant problems and issues with the registration of uh, the vehicle in uh, the uh, traffic police departments. Uh, the, we need to simplify this procedure. We need to simplify the procedure of retrofitting equipment and the registration of uh, uh, this equipment already retrofitted. A few popular um, things. Uh, Gazprom motor fuel um, popularize a lot. And maybe you will play the leading role. Yes, we do. We, we registered a trademark, Echo Gas. This is our fuel brand, um, we've uh, been implementing a lot of uh, international projects, such as gas, commas, 
And uh, in 2018, we had a, a tour from uh, China through Kazakhstan to Russia. And uh, the, in 2017, we had a similar trip from Lisbon to Moscow. And also we had a special program for World Cup of uh, uh, purchasing gas motor NGV equipment. Thank you very much for your information. It was very interesting. And of course, you can do everything. You need, you know, sometimes a good thing can be a uh, can uh, be messed up. Uh, well, the price for methane was uh, first uh, 11, uh, around 11 rubles, then 13 rubles. Kazakhstan still keeps 16 rubles. All of a sudden, you, uh, before New Year, it was like a present, you brought it up from 14 to 18 rubles. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't scare off people, and uh, there's no need today to do this. There's absolutely no need. 14 rubles, well, okay, 16 rubles, but let it uh, fix it for some years, for one year, two years, uh, until you retrofit, until people uh, retrofit their fleet. They spend money. They buy equipment working on uh, on NGV fuel, which is more expensive. You should support these people. You should help them. But why are you doing this? I already uh, made this uh, remark for you, but still on December 29th, you increased the price. Uh, that's a serious uh, remark, serious re 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 rebuke to you. You shouldn't do this. You should um, give people the understanding this is a cheap uh, means of fuel well we accept your command thank you very much for your command we accept it dear colleagues now i'd like to speak to the head of the association of uh, gas motor fuel uh, we have 60 organizations in uh, russia working on this market and they are com combined they are members of the association, and uh, this year the association will mark 20 years in anniversary. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear Mr. Leshevsky, dear Mr. Zokov, dear colleagues. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. On behalf of our association, we combine more than 60 key players of uh, the market of gas fuel, and I'd like to say a few words about the expectations of market players for now. First of all, we appreciate very much the position of Ministry of Energy in terms of the promotion of the sub-program. And the main expectations are related to the fact that uh, federal constituents are asking to support the initiative of the ministry and uh, have the same proactive position. In this year, in 2019, uh, it's not enough just to show a good results on the commissioning of new uh, filling facilities. We need to create a basis for a long-term and sustainable trend. And uh, to do this in every region of Russian Federation, we need to have a comprehensive program accepted with the, using the white toolkit which uh, federal constituent have now to support this industry. And the key point here is the uh, layout of uh, infrastructural uh, facilities which would uh, uh, allow to solve the problem with the right of way and uh, let of allocation. And we as are at center of competence, we're an expert platform, and we are ready to provide any support to the regions uh, and to the body constituents. Second point, uh, of course, to uh, provide the balanced out development, we need to uh, have uh, the accelerated growth of uh, number of cars working on NGV fuels. And the key mechanism is here is the retrofitting of already existing vehicles. To achieve the uh, target indicated by 2024, the facilities on retrofitting should grow by 50% every year. It's not an easy job, but uh, we can solve it. And there is a number of uh, measures uh, we should focus on. First of all, the initiative of Ministry of Energy on subsidizing the retrofitting, we 
uh, propose to increase it from 30 percent to 70 percent. Of course, uh, we need to do our best and to invest many efforts in the increasing the retrofitting facilities also by means of localizing the international technologies in this area. We need to create uh, controlling and public control mechanisms over the safety and quality of these works. works. And um, the key issue, as already mentioned, is the mechanism of registration of retrofitted vehicles. The Ministry of uh, the Interior of Russian Federation developed a specific regulation which is not accepted by the government, unfortunately, because uh, in some regions, the procedure of retrofitting can last from three to seven months, which is absolutely not acceptable for any commercial organization. So please, dear participants and guests, please pay attention to this painful point, and I hope that we can address it together. Thank you. Thank you for your input and uh, for uh, the concise uh, report. Dear friends, we are now moving to the South, to South America. Vladimir Chagin, uh, the racer, uh, seven years uh, winner, seven, seven time winner of Dakar, part of the crew Kamas Master. Let's watch the video from Vladimir. Dear participants of the expert discussion and also all participants and guests of Gaider Forum, uh, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of our team, Kamas Master from Peru from uh, the 41 rally Dakar. Kamas Master takes part in this rally. We uh, uh, think we can keep our leading positions uh, till finish by showing very successful uh, product of uh, our industry. Natural gas is the real alternative for the diesel fuel and uh, starting from 2012, we realized in our team a project together with Gazprom Gas Motor Fuel and VTB Bank, uh, which is called uh, Sporting Gas Camas, which uh, shows very good results. It is uh, steered by Sergei Kuprianov. Uh, so from to, to, to steer, he can steer it from the first hand and give uh, the good uh, evaluation to this car. This car has a, a lot of advantages uh, in off-road use, very good uh, draft qualities. The torque starts from low RPMs, and it's a very high uh, environmental standard, a very important um, in, uh, part in, the, in our discipline. We are going to continue this project, the coverage of, uh, the, of this information program uh, on Kamas and rally raids is more than 100 million people. In September 2018, the Directorate of the International Rally Silkway, together with Power Gazprom, uh, represented uh, by Gazprom Gas Oil, Oil Fuel, realized uh, a run, a rally of um, equipment on NGV in the territory of three countries, China, Kazakhstan, and Russia, for the distance of about 10,000 kilometers. 15 cars uh, were used uh, on uh, NGV and demonstrated high environmental and safety standards. More than 85 million people on the territory of uh, three countries followed our news and uh, followed our activities. Using uh, national gas as a gas motor fuel is a very important government task, and we try to solve it together with the Power Gazprom, and of course, we'll continue this endeavor. Thank you, Vladimir. Let's wish uh, to our Kamas team uh, all successes, and uh, we will expect them back home. Um, Vladimir. Uh, well, the, this pilot is demonstrated. Uh, was uh, this equipment was demonstrated here in Moscow, and I really experienced uh, this uh, powerful, this powerful advantages of this equipment. If you don't know, you can take a look at this equipment. It is displayed here on the, the premises of uh, our forum. Um, I uh, will uh, like to continue. I'd like to continue, and I'd like to offer you another topic. Uh, which is the second key factor of uh, the market 
gas fuel market develop development. You can see the uh, quotes from our expert interviews. All our, these issues are covered by the competence of the Ministry of uh, Trade of Russian Federation. And I'd like to uh, now turn to the Deputy Minister of the Ministry of Industry and Trade, Mr. Morozov. Uh, what are the priorities of uh, producing equipment on NGV fuels? Uh, in uh, the car production, uh, we have more or less uh, information discussed there. And what are the supporting measures planned in future? There was a quote that uh, the state support is the tool which is accepted very well by the market. Uh, so, Mr. Morozov, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I. Uh, uh, I'd like to greet all the participants on behalf of our ministry and like to start my uh, speech from a small reminder. It's, it's said that our Gus Motor Fuel Association didn't say a word about the, that uh, in 2014, 2016, 2017 and 18 years, our ministry uh, one by one have implemented the uh, uh, stimulation program on uh, the fuel demand in this uh, area. Um, and without official uh, funds from federal uh, funds, from, from federal budget, we still uh, try to implement this program on behalf of our ministry. And every time discussing it with the Ministry of Finance and, of course, under the support of the Ministry of Energy and Gazprom, we could find arguments. And uh, we every time found out our internal resources, not big resources, to realize this program of stimulating the demand. So I'd like to tell you very openly that ministry, our ministry uh, is a pioneer in this area. And uh, the uh, awareness of Russian cars working on NGV is uh, due to this activity. Please take a look at the materials which we present today to you. In 2014, we found 3.7 3, 3, 3. billions. In next year's 3 billions. In 2018, 4.6 billions. And in 2018, 4.83 million. And for the whole period, uh, we uh, sold more than 14,000 uh, units of equipment, which is 20 to 30 percent uh, annual renewal of uh, the uh, gas motor fleet. It's also important to say that this uh, state support program made a special focus by the producers to the need of uh, uh, urgently developing new types of uh, engines and new types of uh, gas uh, vessel equipment and the new types of cars, of course. And uh, for these five years, we received a big variety of uh, equipment, of, of vehicles. What trends do we see today? Could you please bring up the previous slide? We can see that in 2017, 2018, we see growing the popular segment of uh, uh, passenger vehicles, which is a very interesting trend. Um, buyers who buy passenger cars working on gas, uh, they are very sensitive to the comfort of its further use. The person going uh, to the country, he should be sure that he won't have any problems with filling the car with gas. Uh, but the trend which we see from 2017 2018 is a very good trend it means that the work on creating the gas filling infrastructure is uh, being uh, uh, pressured and uh, accepted by the end user starting from 2017 2018 we all uh, we gradually start to reduce the state support uh, uh, volume it means that we try to localize completely the production of car components engine and fuel system we already produce it in russia so the cost of retrofitting if in the very beginning of our program the gas motor fuel costed 30 percent roughly 30 percent more expensive than a conventional car today we can say that the cost of the gas uh, motor fuel is 15 12 percent only basically oh we decreased the price um, by 100% and we are also the 
downsizing the measures of state support and at the same time want to keep this incentive alive. The work on uh, popularizing the uh, NGV fuel, it has its own trends and the users of the gas-run vehicles, they are Russian cars. And uh, mostly it's a Lada Vesta brand. You know who are buying, uh, buying them? The Moscow residents and St. Petersburg residents, however surprising it may be. Usually residents of Moscow are buying more expensive cars, but it's about uh, ecological effect. I can say that today in Russia, we have the regulations of the customs unions on the safety of the wheeled uh, transportation. And unlike the European Union, we have the fifth class of the ecological purity. In Europe, they have the sixth class. So using gas in a vehicle adds uh, one more point to the ecological level due to no exhaust, no of the uh, hard particles of the uh, of the pollutants. It's important because we're breathing it. The second part is that natural gas. We are speaking about the natural gas, methane. It's a very small molecular. It's fully oxidized during the burnout. And when we are burning the long chain uh, hydrocarbons, I'm speaking about the gasoline or a special gas which is obtained uh, due to the oil processing. In exhaust, this long chain of the hydrocarbons are not fully oxidized. And in exhaust, especially when cars are stuck in the traffic jams, we can see additional carcino chains and uh, organic uh, substances, which are a very negative factors of using gasoline-fueled cars and cars which are using the other types of the synthetic fuel. And methane would be a perfect fuel. And we are saying that the economy is also a good factor. And Viktor Alexeyevich, thank you for your remark. I believe that the NGV fuel will always be attractive for the buyers because people are calculating their expen expenses. People are counting their costs. Next slide, please. Now we're speaking about the NGV fuel. And uh, on a separate note, I will be speaking about the CNG and its uh, distinctions from the LNG. We're speaking about the compressed natural gas. Basically, all of our manufacturers can, um, can um, offer different models of the vehicles operating on NGV. Summing up the preliminary results of the 2018 without waiting for official numbers from the Rostat uh, Statistics Agency. We have produced and sold about 1,800,000 vehicles. You know, and speaking about the production capacities, uh, they've been built worth of 3.5 million cars. So the load factory is 50% with the Russian automotive uh, factories. And uh, the manufacturers are always looking for opportunity to uh, make more cars. It's their main business. And the issues related to promoting the NGV-run uh, cars are important not only for a Gazprom company, but also for the automotive manufacturers, which have invested their funds in uh, producing those cars. I would like to know that the huge work has been done by the gas automotive group and a lot of commercial fleet and equipment and the in in the in the in the cars the uh, gazons and the gazelle the new trucks are equipped with this uh, type of the natural gas capabilities another important thing that i have to note is today we are moving into a new stage of industrialization in the russian automotive industry uh, since 2007 we've held a number of subsequent uh, programs to localize the modern automotive components. Now we've had a third stage, industrial assembly number one, number two. Now it's a third stage. We are launching a special investment contract. We've built in Russia um, a big number of manufacturing capacities uh, up to date, speaking about the welding, uh, assembly, painting. And the third stage of industrialization is localized, the deep localization of uh, automotive components. We fully localized the NGV um, engines of the Volsky um, auto concern, which belongs to the alliance uh, Renault Nissan Mitsubishi International Alliance. We have um, the Yaroslavsky engine um, 
Motor Works and the Kamasas, their own production line, Olyanovsky, Volsky, Motor Works, they are producing mid-range uh, engines for the commercial fleet. We are going to speak about that. With uh, It is very important. And uh, speaking about the about the gas equipment, um, about the compressed gas equipment, uh, in 2019, uh, we are hoping that there will be industrial scale compressed gas equipment uh, manufacturing of the fourth class where there is no usage of the metal liners i mean we have the fully uh, fully uh, composite balloons it's uh, absolutely safe even at the moment of the let's say impact or explosion it simply makes a hole and the, there's no explosion of the gas gas simply evaporates or leaks. It's a very good story, and we are hoping that in 2019 we'll have the um, industrial scale production of this kind of the gas equipment. Today, the share of the localized equipment, when you're speaking about the engines, engines and the compressed gas equipment, the fuel distribution systems, and today we are at 65 to 70 percent of the localization, and we are continuing this effort. I also. Unfortunately, we are pressed for time. Next slide, please. One another promising trend we are seeing is, of course, switching to the usage of the liquefied natural gas. And uh, here mm, we go beyond automotive industry, which in this case was the leader. Automotive industry working with the LNG, like we've been saying, the main trucks, and Kamas Group is among the leaders here, and they have tested their uh, cars. And the Gas Group is also developing this. And right now, we have completed the uh, the work, and we've put into industrial operations of the uh, of the gas uh, pipe carriers. It's a huge truck, which is capable of uh, taking the huge uh, trains, uh, the uh, Siberia and the Far East. And we are also operating the pilot gas and piston locomotives and uh, which is very important in terms of environmental protection just imagine if you speaking about the modern locomotive it's a it's a, it's a huge internal combustion engine which is working non-stop non-stop especially during the winter the engine is never shut down so when we uh, migrate from uh, from the other fuels to gas, we get the ecological effect, which is way, way higher than if we uh, migrate to uh, wheeled uh, equipment. Sinaro Transportation Company and Holding Trans Company uh, have to be uh, have to be highlighted here because these kind of uh, machines have been developed and they're being operated by the Russian railways. And we are hoping that in the near future, these the equipment will be used in the LNG and they'll be bought by the Russian railways on a large industrial scale. We are at the completion stage with our major machine building uh, facilities, the whole line of um, engines which are working on the LNG. And we are hoping that our next consumers will be the shipbuilding companies because it's also quite a big market and by the way we're speaking about the maritime vessels and about the automotive manufacturers and very briefly if i may i have a short command about the issue related to the program which hopefully will be adopted in march about the uh, conversion of the vehicles i'm speaking about the conversion of the wheeled uh, um, transportation from the gasoline or diesel uh, into the ngv uh, fuel we already have new engines and uh, uh, the hyundai company who signed the special investment companies reno nissan alliance have also have it in their plans to build the newest um, uh, generations of the NGV engines. But speaking about the Ministry of Energy, please develop the special documentation that this kind of retrofitting will be um, will be for the Russian manufactured engines and the Russian manufactured compressed gas equipment so that we could stimulate domestic production, that the money which is government investment investing should be very systemic, uh, incentivizing not only consumption but also manufacturing of this kind of engine and this fleet. Thank you very much indeed. We are continuing our transportation discussion and now Sergey, the time is yours, the Executive Vice President of the Russian Machines uh, 
company Sergey Arzumanov and we're speaking about the uh, line of the uh, of the new uh, feeling equipage uh, for the for the vehicles running on the NGV and the company is one of the pioneers of the NGV business in Russia thank you very much I'm limited on time and I'll be very brief in saying that we've been pursuing this issue since 2012 and actually the gas automotive groups is the leader in the segment of the commercial fleet in Russia we hold over 65 percent share of the market about the 85 percent would be the buses uh, and, uh, LCVs uh, what Alexander has been showing on his slide it's a uh, gas uh, fueled buses 95 to 97 percent will be manufactured by the gas group Lias and pass uh, uh, brands of the buses and today the whole line of the, our vehicles has the CNG version basically all of them and we at Yaroslavsky Motor Works have uh, developed from scratch and launched in 2016 a totally new uh, gas run engine of the 530 series. President Putin had been present and we uh, received quite high appraisal of this achievement. This engine is uh, second to no Western counterparts and even surpassing them. The, the CNG uh, engine by the Mann company uh, is very popular, but our engine for the number of parameters is, uh, is surpassing the engine by the Mann group. We've also made a special entity within the group which is supervising the gas filling solutions because you simply cannot build uh, vehicles and and you sort of drop them to the market because uh, it's the RAM uh, uh, CNG company on our conveyor belt. We have the container gas filling um, equipment. As you can see it on the slide, we're working with the Gazprom uh, gas motor fuel, which is our partner, and our professionals are um, communicating with them. And this gas filling uh, unit in 2017 has been awarded the quality award by the Italian crew. Uh, it's basically an Italian quality institute they gave us award as the best product of the year we're speaking about the russian made production in uh, located in nizhny novgorod and we can uh, provide to the market about the 50 gas filling stations uh, which we can produce today again made in russia so i want to point out that we are willing uh, for a one big breakthrough and I would like to draw your attention to the following fact today Viktor Alexeyevich Zubkov you know, on behalf of the uh, car manufacturers I would like to express our gratitude for the huge support he is providing to this whole industry of the gas motor fuel in the NGV because it's strategically important not only to Gazprom not only to car makers but only to the Russian state and it's very profitable for all citizens because everyone who can count their expenses if your fuel uh, takes only 50 percent of your budget it makes your business so much more profitable and operationally more effective it's very evident and what stops us we have the biggest dealership network in russia and we have a feedback all the way from the cities of Vladivostok to Kaliningrad on a daily basis. We have two major obstacles. Number one, will we have state subsidies in this year? Because prior to that, we have one year lag in subsidies. And everyone was sitting there on their fence and waiting, OK, I'm going to buy the equipment. What if there'll be no subsidies? I'm speaking about the midterm program, five year program, which would enable Russian municipalities uh, and, uh, and um, other companies to plan their situation. The secondly, are we going to see the expansions of the gas filling network? 300 CNG gas filling stations, and we have the same criteria for what of our loading factory. I've been speaking with the BP vice president responsible for retail, and he's saying, Sergey, the less gas filling station, the less will be the occupancy rate. The the more gas stations we have, the if we'll have the 1,500 stations, our load factor will be 65 to 75, even 80 percent. Who is going to pay 60 rubles uh, for a distillate for the liquid? Uh, entropy, if you can go and buy it for 17 rubles instead of 60. And another key factor is the price increase. 
Sergei Sabianin, the mayor of Moscow, is saying, OK, what if we are going to retrofit all the equipment and the Gazprom, let's say, or other companies will, uh, will do the price hike? We should not scare the buyers because we can lure them in and people people uh, migrate to this new equipment and then there'll be the price increase. The natural gas today is the only type of fuel which um, in its uh, cost structure does not have the processing. We basically have it ready as we produce it from the ground up. And uh, we can be fully assured that uh, whatever the case, it will always be cheaper, at least by 30%. Because neither Gazprom, no other company can simply come and say it will be 100, 100 rubles or per, per you know, cubic meter or something else. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sergey. Dear colleagues, and now we're going to speak about the big volumes of using um, um, CNG when operating uh, tanker fleet. Uh, and uh, the Commerce paper has published the news that uh, the new uh, that new uh, LNG tankers have been ordered, um, uh, which will be using the um, uh, uh, NGV as the main fuel, and also another company, Sofcom Float Company. Why such a decision has been made, and um, what will be the competitive advantage of the company in competitive environment? And please explain your approach uh, on making this kind of decision. Okay, good morning. It'll take me about five slides for my presentations, which uh, you can see right now. So in the center was the gasification of uh, land, of, of ground transport. It's clear, and uh, the more uh, events there in the previous uh, period. At the same time, the liquefied fuel as the uh, fuel for fleet is not theory, it's practice. And uh, I'd like, to, with pleasure, to demonstrate you our first vehicle, our first vessel, uh, ocean vehicle, ocean vessel, Gagarinsky Prospect uh, vessel, uh, which uh, made the first commercial transportation from uh, uh, Rotterdam using the liquefied gas uh, as the main fuel. On the next slide, you can see the story about the main load on the economy, which is on the maritime transport. 90% of, uh, uh, of uh, loads are transported on sea, and for Russia, it's very important. The most important part of our trade is supported by uh, marine transport. And uh, this huge amount is supported by transport externalists, by the uh, load on the environment and Russia as the participant of international maritime organization takes part in global conventions which prohibit to use a number of fuel types in terms of its sulfur content from 2020 in the number of regions of the global uh, global ocean, we have the reality of this uh, limitations already. So the alternative of gas as the main marine fuel is, uh, um, is, is there's no alternative at all. And uh, the main channels of the Russian internal trade is Baltic Sea, Black Sea, Mediterranean, and the main points of uh, of, of uh, transportation are already affected by these rules. And this is the question of yesterday already. Uh, we were preparing for this uh, situation. We've been seeking for uh, temporary solutions uh, as of installing of uh, different um, happy fuels, like of uh, 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 heavy uh, oils. And the next years, we'll have the next uh, wave of regulations related to greenhouse gases and only the natural gas can be a solution for this. Starting from 2015, our technical center is focused on the partnership of risk sharing with Shell Concern and we addressed a lot of the technical aspects uh, related to engines, related to producers of maritime equipment, with regulators, with port uh, regulators uh, all over the world, which allowed us to 
to create the first super tanker which uses uh, NG uh, V fuel as the main type of fuel. We solved the 100% of uh, SOX, NOX for 76% and CO2 for 27%. We are absolutely ready for the next wave of regulation which would uh, for sure happen uh, in five years from now. In the global uh, fleet, uh, we will have to replace one more under 200, 2,000 diesel for gas. Uh, the test run uh, was successful last year. All the details were provided. We uh, uh, adjusted it, and uh, it was very good for us. The on the left, you can see the Finnish vehicle, which was uh, once uh, the greenest one. Now it, our uh, tanker. Sofcom float, Gagarin Prospect is the most, the greenest one, the most eco environmental friendly. Um, in the next years, we plan 11 vessels, and uh, we will have absolutely different level of environmental requirements. This is about economics and commercial uh, issues. We all count money, and uh, as uh, Mr. Novak mentioned it correctly, as uh, in the end, the economic interest moves every civilization process. Uh, in the first commercial holes, we showed 20% uh, higher e efficiency versus competitors, which uh, makes our positions even stronger. We have close cooperation with Gazprom. We are really grateful to uh, Mr. Zubkov. He found an opportunity to have a talk to all operators, so sea operators, river operators, and uh, for, to outline the program to develop this segment. And we hope that Alexander Valentinovich uh, uh, in this program not only the ground transport will also care for uh, rail transport and sea transport, which is a big perspective, big pro prospect for us. And by the way, it's a big honor for me to speak uh, at Gaidar Forum in 1992 uh, with Gaidar being in the, in the meeting. Uh, we discussed the issue how to bring in grain uh, uh, because the Soviet Union collapsed, the Soviet the system of funding collapsed, the critical task how to bring in grain to uh, provide food security. And we have a lot of calculations that I remember. It was in Leningrad, St. Petersburg, 11 um, million tons uh, turnover. And I asked for the statistic. Now we have 254 million tons. It's a huge uh, uh, amount, huge growth of our industry, absolutely different dimensions, but it creates risks and tension in the environment, loads on the environment. It would be strange to see that the big port of St. Petersburg, which is one of the top three big hubs in Europe, would not be a green place, a green location, um, being in the country which belongs 40% of, of, uh, of fuel. This uh, is, of course, the political will, the concentration, and in this regard, we need support from the state, from the financial com community, from producers. Uh, Arctic, another element of uh, our key development plan, to bring it to 80 million tons. So the, the colleague speaks not only about uh, sulfur, uh, also about rust. 80 million tons uh, of rust is a big impact. We have to mitigate this impact, of course. We carried out the first pilot run this year. We uh, found out all, all painful points, and we are sure that the project in Ops, Op uh, Bay should be retrofitted for gas, fuel, and in this way we can solve all the environmental issues and make it in more economic way and more uh, saving for the ecology. Localization, next things. Good things. In Soviet Union, didn't pay a lot of attention to uh, big vessels. Our external trade didn't require big vessels, big vehicles, and uh, the priority was military. Now we create a number of uh, uh, high duty big vessels, also Izvesda. Uh, the star and the green line here is uh, the one, the one of the most important lines. For Rosneft, for Novatek, for Shell, and before New Year, we finished all our talks with Novatek, with Zvezda, and we decided to build by 2021 three tankers MR, uh, which will be completely localized in the Russian Federation. What would be the conclusion here? In the global trade, migration to gas is absolutely inevitable. The question is what 
will be the place of the Russian energy sector, Russian shipbuilding industry, financial industry, will take in this big work. And uh, we have a wonderful perspective, wonderful prospects in this area, not to lag behind and in some issues even to be a leader. Thank you. Thank you very much. So here we can say that uh, your efforts will be success. Dear colleagues, I'd like to propose to discuss the situation in regions because um, the uh, gas uh, fuel market development is uh, being uh, is going to regions and um, um, Mr. Zubkov mentioned it already. I'd like to invite to our discussion the deputy governor of Moscow region, Mr. Tikhonov. And uh, uh, the uh, this region is uh, leading now the comprehensive program of uh, implementing this NGV fuels in regions. Um, there's a systemic approach and the wish to build the chain of filling stations in a very systemic way. And uh, it's not all of a sudden we see the location selected for it. And what is the task of the region, what uh, the local government is doing. And so we ask Mr. Tikhonov to speak during our session. Good morning. Good morning, uh, dear participants, Mr. Subkov, Mr. Novak. Of course, the Rostov region is uh, one of the main reasons is that Rostov region is the gate to Caucasus. Today, we evaluate the fleet of car fleet at uh, 1.6 million. And the fleet going transit is around 8 million transiting our region. The environment uh, in 2017 was the year of the environment, so the issues of uh, ecologies were taken for the analysis, and uh, we see that the pollutions which covered Rostov region belong, uh, account for 90% to car transport. Three years ago, we had 11 gas filling stations operated by Gazprom. Unfortunately, these filling stations were of old style, and uh, the speed of filling was low, and it couldn't uh, give the uh, desirable effect to develop this type of uh, um, vehicles. Um, we, in 2014, we accepted the development program for the gas filling stations. In 2017, we signed with Gazprom Gas Filling Fuel an agreement. And in 2018, just a month ago, we signed with Gazprom and with Rosnano an agreement to develop uh, jointly the, uh, s the development of the infrastructural network. We have become a pilot project to develop this program in the south region of Russia. What are our goals for today? The fleet of cars is around 20,000 uh, units using methane, and the fleet which is ready to migrate, and the user ready to switch it for the real five years is 55,000. And for the next decade, 100, well, more than 120,000. We need to uh, involve the agriculture. Agriculture is also ready, but we need to make the infrastructure ready for this. What is infrastructure? Again, we have 11 Gazprom, Gazprom three private uh, filling stations, and a few combined for diesel fuel and uh, gas. In the nearest perspective, we have to have take 62 gas uh, stations with Gazprom, around 20 from private investors, which will allow us to completely cover Rostov region with methane filling stations. And uh, uh, today we understand that the reduction of pollution in the environment will amount to 20 to 20 to 30 uh, thousand tons uh, reduction. What is also important, Alexander Nikolaevich mentioned the private consumer. Today, we see how small and medium enterprises go to this business. This is an indicator whether it's uh, profitable or not. Because small business, they calculate money very strongly. And so when we see like Largos coming and the uh, Kamas uh, are being retrofitted, and the region looks at it uh, very thoroughly, taking into account the programs which is prepared by ministries, regions will support us, uh, the region will be supported in different areas and we did our best to develop this market. That was in brief. Thank you very much, Mikhail Mikhailovich, Mr. Tikhonov. And uh, the approach during the partner selection, regional partner, who, which uh, is built in the Gazprom company, uh, we asked to present by uh, Mr. Mikhailenko, 
the department head of uh, Pau Gazprom, how Gazprom selects uh, partners and regions and what are the priorities and what are the criteria, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lashevsky, dear Mr. Zubkov, dear Mr. Novak, dear guests, dear colleagues. I think the selection of region and with, to work with Gazprom is absolutely evident. The region should be should first care about the economic and environmental component and uh, to study very thoroughly the instruction from uh, President Putin. If uh, we go into detail, so I have to say that Gazprom, of course, works with uh, the region starting from 2014. The local of uh, these uh, uh, endeavor is m the activity of Mr. Zubkov. Of course, the task was really comprehensive and uh, and uh, hard. And uh, for now, we signed around 60 agreements in this area and uh, the agreements between Gazprom and uh, the region are basic agreements uh, having all the algorithms and sequences. The second uh, very important argument is that this agreement contains normative and regulatory relations which uh, uh, oblige both parties to work within uh, their economic uh, constituents and we, within their scopes. Uh, first is infrastructure, and second is popularization and buying equipment for gas motor fuel. Of course, this basic document contains measurements outlined in our strategy, expanding the fleet, expanding the uh, and stimulating demand and uh, both for legal entities and individuals. Of course, this is the first aggregator. When uh, a person, a personal user, would believe in it, would buy this topic, uh, so they would not go back to uh, other type of fuels. And the third level is, of course, organization of uh, good uh, conditions for investors. For now, we should add, and we're proud of that, that we almost finished with the sub-program of uh, the gas fuel and region while uh, designing its own program and we have 27 programs in this industry will in prospectively also with ministry of energy uh, work together and uh, to have a good footprint in this program we should say also that gazprom have uh, 300 filling stations and uh, we were only company working in this field uh, I, there was a lot of said about it we must say that we have pilot projects in different regions in Volgograd and Moscow Moscow region St. Petersburg Leningrad region Tatarstan of course Krasnodar Stavropol in uh, all these regions we create local networks which are working quite efficiently and they uh, are all, all belonging to one and single systematic approach of our company, which has a bright future. In terms of the speed-up project and the initiator, Mr. Zubkov, uh, we are grateful for that. And Vasily Yurevich supported this initiative from Rostov, and Evgeny Stepanovich from Belgorod supported this. And we must say that we signed a roadmap uh, in December, and this roadmap is absolutely straightforward. Two participants of the process are there. One pragmatically builds. Uh, and should build 20 filling stations to 2020 plus a few modules and others should provide land should provide the potential and uh, involve the mass of uh, potential user which would uh, allow both uh, economics entities have the economics it's absolutely clear and transparent we have the algorithm which is absolutely obvious and evident, we propagate it, we promote it, and we constructively discuss it. If uh, there are any additional issues or questions, we are absolutely open to discuss them. It's a very important information for regions. Uh, the approach is absolutely transparent and clear. Many times we already mentioned the topic of environment, and I'd like to give the floor to uh, Mrs. Duboreva, uh, chairman of the Commission of uh, the Chamber on Russian Federation on Ecology and uh, Environmental Safety. And I'd like to ask uh, Mrs. Duboreva to assess how the transition to gas motor fuel could impact the environmental situation, what it could give the citizens of our 
country. Thank you very much for your kindly invitation. We we heard businessmen, we heard officials, and uh, now we can hear the voice of, of, of population. What we people do need, what do we need, and we have people need to, to have it not expensive and safe, not uh, uh, very harmful for them. And of course, development of new alternative fuels uh, uh, evokes resilience, resistance, uh, and m maybe sometimes mistrust, because it's always new. So I would uh, propose to uh, involve scientists. People, unfortunately, do not believe neither to businessmen nor officials, and even they don't believe us, non-governmental associations. But they still have trust in science. And uh, I was preparing for this measurement. I tried to find some uh, researches, scientific researches. Uh, but there are a few of them. There are few papers on this. Uh, rust, okay, no particles, less particles, very good. But there are other studies. There must be other studies. But we will, must, should uh, involve more in, uh, uh, scientists here to to prove us that it's really safe. And so, uh, NGOs and the environmentalists uh, would have a different attitude to this. Of course, our chamber receives a lot of uh, different uh, letters and messages from. Uh, from the population on pollution and we work with regions with big cities of course transport is the most important problem from the point of environment what good things we saw in while traveling all over the world for the, for instance waste handling we saw that in san francisco uh, there are 200 uh, garbage machines they uh, work on gas and we paid attention to it they work on gas on methane and this is the municipal uh, fleet and they ask why first the economics and second the environment there are two reasons they are good businessmen there by the way and so such good examples we can see also in other countries which for us it's a very important topic thank you very much for your invitation we are ready to join your efforts and today after listening your section um, i uh, became the supporter of uh, ngv fuel i will uh, con con retrofit my my car for this fuel thank you very much Thank you. Dear colleagues, we are uh, coming to the end of uh, our big uh, session devoted to the development of NGV fuels. And I'd like to give uh, the floor to Mr. Idrisov, Prorector of uh, RANEPA, Director of the Institute of uh, Industry Markets. We discussed regional issues, uh, environmental aspects, and now let's take a look at the market from the point of view of the macroeconomics. And I would like to ask Georgi Eskandarevich, give the subject matter evaluation, what would be the macroeconomic effect of uh, the development of this uh, industry and what would be the macroeconomic view on this situation? Good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, everyone is uh, waiting for the plenary discussion, so I will be brief. Our Academy of Public Administration and the Governments have uh, the systematic analysis of different projects going uh, uh, for the realization of uh, the UCAS 204 of our president. And from last year, we have a methodological center working to support the realization of this uh, uh, order 204. The main uh, effort is focused on uh, special studies related to macroeconomic uh, effects and uh, studies. The comprehensive models which we use are quite bright. They uh, take into account, uh, yes, uh, the, you can see it on the slide. We calculate not only cancer effect, short-term effect uh, from uh, facilities we build, but also the long-term effect. What would be the effect from the point of view of employment? Uh, additional value will be in the GDP base after we finish the construction, after we increase the production of gas, and after users start migrating to this type of fuel. What can we see uh, based on these results? You can see the following. First, the cumulative effect, almost 1.5 trillion um, rubles for 11 years versus approximate uh, figures which are showing, uh, which are now seen in the market, around 10,000 uh, cubic meters realization, two to 2.5 thousand uh, filling stations, and the uh, significant number of uh, vehicles. If the GDP is around 100 trillions, 
accumulated additionally 1.5 percent of GDP. The long-term effect, apart from that, which will stay in the base and which uh, will be implemented, uh, GDP will be higher, the trend will be shifted from uh, to, 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 to 2030, 2035. We have related at around uh, one percent point of GDP to become the five economics in the world. It's very serious. Uh, we fight for every percent point. And here we see the very significant impulse. And of course, it means employment and the pure taxes. So this is a very good project on our view. It's uh, very significant from the point of macroeconomics. And if we manage to overcome uh, we as economists, what we call it, the gap of the market, the problem of the young industry. If we overcome this problem of the young industry and the, with the stimulation of the government, with time, it would become profitable both for users and for producers and small and medium enterprises, and then we will have the proper market in this regard. Dear colleagues, we call uh, uh, it to an end. We discussed all the questions. Let's take a look at the results of the online voting. Let's see how you evaluate this industry, your results, your statistics. What do you think about the main uh, obstacles or main constraints in significant development of the uh, network? Uh, what are the benefits of the gas motor fuel economics? 41, 44 and uh, one percent economics won. Yes, you're right when you mentioned that economics will win everywhere. Thank you very much, dear colleagues, and thank you very much for such extensive discussion and deep discussion. I hope that our discussion is not the final one because the topic is really huge. Thank you very much and see you again.